I'm a cartoonist based in Portland, Oregon. The Hillsborough Library is one of my favorite places to draw, but until we can be there together again, I thought it could be fun to make a video to show you how I draw characters and hopefully help you when you practice making comics at home. I don't know how helpful you'll be. I mean, are you, are you even qualified? <sighs> yes, Peanut. I'm a professional cartoonist. I do comics for kids and adults that you can read in many prestigious publications. Um, a lot of them do star Peanut, so I have to put up with these kind of rude comments she makes sometimes. Well, all I'm saying is maybe you should spend less time drawing and more time feeding me. Yeah, Peanut, you should probably be trying to help me be a successful cartoonist so I can buy you more food. Have you ever thought about that? Whatever. All right, Peanut, if you're quite finished, I would like to show these people how to draw a character. Is that all right with you? Whatever. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to start off by drawing myself. I'll show you how I do that. And then we'll think about how we can apply what we learned from doing that to other characters. So for this video, I'm using a paintbrush and black ink. That might not be good for you to do at home because you could get ink everywhere, which I do all the time. So instead, I suggest you use a pencil and just regular pens on regular printer paper. There's a zillion art supplies you could use, and some of them are great, but I think when we start, we should keep it simple. I'm using this brush and this ink because I think it will look better on the video. Okay. So the way I started was almost just like a smiley face. I'm just going to do a big circle for a head. It's a little more of an oval than a proper smiley face is. Dots for eyes. And then I'm going to do a two-line smile instead of one. I smile a lot, so that's a good way to start when I'm drawing myself. Some people think that means I'm secretly evil, but I promise I'm super nice. Mm, beg to differ. Okay. So I also have a kind of pointy nose, so put that on there. I have reasonably thick eyebrows. Some people have really thin eyebrows or hardly have them, but. So I'll draw an ear on here so that I can hear when Peanut says rude stuff to me. What? Nothing. But I'm going to keep that pretty simple too. I'm just doing one big hoop for the, the outside of the ear and then a smaller one for the inside. Put a little suggestion of one on the other side too. But the big feature, I think, that might be the first thing someone remarks on when they see me is my hair. It's pretty long on this side and pretty short on this side, though. I've got a little bit of a weird part here right now. So let's see if I can get that in the drawing. Pretty long on that side. A bit shorter on that side. wearing a black t-shirt, so I put that in. And I think that's a decent cane. So one time when I was doing a class with some kids, I overheard them drawing me, and one of them said, you gotta make him look old. And I was like, hey, I'm not that old, but to a kid I look old. So that was a feature that seemed more significant to them than how I see myself. So when you're drawing a character, just think about what features you want to emphasize to make them look the way you want. It's not like taking a photo or doing a super realistic painting where every single detail has to be in there. Just pick the key details that make the character look the right way. So, if we're going to draw a different character, what if we're going to do a comic where Kane is a character? Got that swoopy hair in there. So, if I'm going to put other characters in this comic, I need to make them look different from Kane, but also easy to draw. So, I could give one a square head, but then put the same kind of features in it. Maybe this guy's also kind of mad. I'd be mad if I had a square head. 
Kind of looking like Frankenstein. So I'm giving some Frankenstein hair too. Is there anyone else I should draw? I can't think of anyone. Mm. Yes, Peanut, do you have a suggestion? Mm. Well, Peanut, I can't think of anyone else to draw. So unless you have a suggestion, I'm just gonna have to end the video. Um, you should, I, I wanna be drawn. Fine, whatever. It's not like I've drawn you a zillion bazillion times. So, okay, let's do it. So if I'm drawing Peanut, I'm going to start off with a shape that's pretty similar to the shape of my head, except it's got those pointy cat ears on top. I'm going to do those same dots for eyes. But maybe I should stop here. Peanut doesn't really smile. She's got a kind of simpler mouth structure that's more like the nose and the mouth connecting. I think that's kind of a good basic cat face. If I put in a couple more details on the ears, put in some whiskers... If you'd never met me, if you just started this video right now, and I said, what's this a drawing of? You'd say it's a cat. I'm pretty sure. But it doesn't look like this particular cat that lives in my house and says mean things to me. What? Nothing. So, what features should I add to make this look like Peanut? First is, she's a calico cat. So, I should put in a little bit of that special pattern she has. Since I'm working just in black and white, I can't put in too much of that. It's not like in some of the other drawings I do of her where I can have a full color animal. Because if I do all these lines across it, it's going to interfere with the, the main lines that make up the drawing. But if I put in a few up here, I can have that suggestion of her pattern. So I think there's two more things I need to do to make this look like Peanut. The first is I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just give her a collar. And on that collar, I'm going to put a big letter P. So if someone's looking at this comic and they're like, wait, which cat was that again? They have a pretty good clue there. It's, it's not bad to use words and other cues to help the people reading your comic know what you're talking about. But the last thing I think I need to do to really make this be a peanut is convey her emotion. She's an angry animal. Hmm. That's pretty good. I think it's still missing something. If you look at Peanut closely, you might notice that her face is a little unusual. She has a bald area around her mouth from allergies she had as a kitten. So I'm just going to add that in to capture her full, strange, unique beauty. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm perfect. You are perfect, but you're also a weirdo. Okay, so... I think that's a pretty decent Peanut. That's how Peanut looks to me. If Peanut did a comic about herself, I bet she'd look pretty different. And if you drew a comic about her, it might look different than mine. Don't think about how to copy the exact drawing. Think about how to use these ideas to draw in your own way. I'm going to give you an example. What if a mouse were going to draw Peanut? In this world where cats can talk, maybe mice can draw comics. I've never seen it happen, but I don't want to say it's impossible. So to me, Peanut is a small, cute animal that I feed, she snuggles with me, we have a certain kind of relationship. But to a mouse, she would seem totally different. To that mouse, she'd just be a blur of fangs and claws. So when that mouse drew Peanut, those are the things that would seem significant to them. They want to be thinking about how her chin looks or what words are written on her collar. It would just be all claws and fangs. This drawing's a little messier, but I think that's actually good because it makes it look more like it's a chaotic, moving thing. Kind of helps convey that terrifying quality. But, of course, there's more to drawing characters than just a bunch of faces, right? What about their whole bodies? Well, I've got a couple tricks that I think could help you with that. I think to talk about this, we're going to start off with drawing Peanut. So, don't tell Peanut, but I kind of think she's shaped like a bowling pin that's flat on one side. Rude! Well, the shoe fits. The bowling shoe. So, 
make a shape like that. Then I can add in those famous peanut details that we drew before. Got my ears, eyes, anger, stripes. And I guess you should have a tail and legs and all those boring things that most cats have. So I can use that same shape and draw a different kind of creature. Or, I could do a different shape and put the same details on it. What if Peanut was just a big square? Doesn't really look like Peanut anymore, but I think we could even use it as a new character if we wanted to. So hopefully those tips will help you with designing your own characters, but I don't expect you to be a magic character designing whiz from the second you finish this video. It's gonna take a little bit of practice. Luckily, we have a worksheet that will help you do that very thing in the comments of this very video. Now, it is gonna be some hard work. Work! This maybe sounds too hard for me. I'm just gonna steal your drawings. Peanut, you can't steal stuff all the time. Do you remember what happened last time you tried to steal something? Uh... Oh, apparently Peanut doesn't remember what happened, so I think she needs your help. So you can go to the link below this video to download this worksheet, or you can draw it yourself from scratch on a blank piece of paper. Peanut's new castle laboratory is amazing! Yeah, but how did she afford all this on a cat's salary? What, do you think she stole it or something? Dracula's outside with an army of rabid narwhals. Peanut, did you steal this castle from Dracula? Um, it's okay. It looks like she has a plan. It's time for the peanut-powered monster machine. <laughs> First, the machine makes a blob of monster mush. <laughs> then we can add details to turn it into any kind of creature we want. Help Peanut defeat Drac by crafting these creepers. Add eyes and a mouth and... Legs? Tails? Tentacles? Scales? Wings? Then get ready to put your creatures in a comic. Until next time, comics friends, keep drawing your pictures and petting your cats. Yeah!